You are listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. I'm your host, Adam Rosen. I'm a fellowship-trained, board-certified orthopedic surgeon who specializes in knee replacement. Here I'll talk to you about common knee complaints and other orthopedic issues. We'll cover other important health-related topics, all of which are meant to helpfully answer some of your questions and help improve the quality of your life. Thanks for listening, and on with the next episode. Hello and welcome back. This is Adam Rosen, and you're listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. In today's podcast, I actually want to talk to you and explain to you what your x-rays look like. Um, I was actually surprised um, talking with a bunch of uh, docs, and and they were somewhat surprised too, because most docs that I know will share and show the x-rays to people and to patients. Um, And we were actually surprised to find out that actually a bunch of docs don't, and a lot of patients you know, haven't ever seen their x-rays. Uh, and I, I understand this. If you're a primary um, care doctor and you see a patient in the office, you may send them for an x-ray. Uh, you may have you or your staff call them with the results. Um, and sometimes, you know, unfortunately, I think it's one of the the downfalls of uh, modern kind of medicine as far as the majority, not all, but the majority of medical schools, that the amount of orthopedic knowledge um, that's taught is actually quite poor. There's actually a lot of studies that have looked at that. So, you know, doctors coming out, they may have one rotation in four years of orthopedics. Um, so they may not have a very good understanding of what they're actually looking at on the x-ray. So they rely a lot on the report by the radiologist. Um, but in our world in orthopedics, um, more commonly you're seeing the patient and deciding they need an x-ray and doing it right there in the office and having the patient come back to the room. Um, or more commonly for a lot of our things, more based on protocol, you know, we know if they're coming in with nothing, you know, if they have pain, we got to make sure they don't have a fracture or a tumor or arthritis. So they're getting x-rays walking in the door and then in the room, the x-rays are there because that helps us make a complete diagnosis and start rendering treatment. And that becomes the big difference. You know, you see your primary, you have knee pain. They don't know why they send you for an x-ray. So they've examined you, but they don't really have a firm diagnosis. They may have an idea um, of what you have, but until they get the x-ray report, they can't rule in or rule out other things. And we're trying to do all of that at one setting. So when patients come in and they're getting an x-ray today, just for sake of simplicity, I'm going to talk about the most common patient I see is for knee pain, not traumatic. So this is different in the patient that falls off a ladder and goes to the emergency room. But this is someone that's just had pain in their knee without trauma, and we get a series of x-rays. So typically, someone over 50 will typically get four x-rays. And and these four x-rays help really look at the knee in different ways. So the most important thing, and the thing that I stress with everybody, students, interns, fellows, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, primary care doctors, and even patients, is that if you're getting evaluated in your hips or your knees or your ankles or your feet, and it's not traumatic, you need to be standing. So even if someone, let's say you see your primary, they order x-rays and you go and they want you to lay down on the table, you should even inquire, hey, shouldn't I be standing for these? Because we can't assess the joint, the alignment, the space when you lay down. It gives us a false sense of security if we're looking for instability, malalignment, or arthritis. Um, So the first thing we have people do is standing up, we get one x-ray from front to back, and that gives us a lot of information. The second x-ray we typically get is a flexed knee view, or what was termed a Rosenberg view, Um, and this is a similar view from front to back. It's actually shot from back to front, uh, but it gives us that two-dimensional image of the knee from front to back or back to front, depending on how you're looking at it. But with the knee bent, it gives us a different look at the back half of the knee. Um, The third x-ray is typically some form of what we call lateral, meaning shooting the leg from the side. The knee can be straight or bent. Um, That typically doesn't have to be standing, but there are times where we'll get the patient to put weight on that. Obviously, you can't squat down really deeply and have the knee bent if you're putting weight on it. And the last or the fourth x-ray is some view of the kneecap joint. Typically, they're called a merchant or a sunrise view where you bend the knee and they're shooting across the top of your knee to give us an assessment of the kneecap joint. So what are we actually looking for? Well, there's a lot of things we're looking for. So first and foremost, we're making sure we got a good x-ray that we can look at it. If it's shot at a weird angle, you can't really make a thorough assessment. So we have to make sure that they're a good x-ray. And then we want to look at the bone quality. You know, does the bone look normal? Does the bone look very thin and washed out and demineralized? That may indicate osteoporosis. 
So if somebody looks at the x-ray and says, oh, you know, it looks like you may have osteoporosis, we're actually not diagnosing that the way a bone density test would or a DEXA scan would, but we're using it more as an adjective, meaning osteopenic, just to describe that the bone quality doesn't look normal for a person of that person's age. Sometimes it can be based on the way that the x-ray was shot, you know, the distance to the machine or the amount of radiation, but it's usually some inkling that lets us know that this bone just doesn't look super strong and it may require additional workup. The next thing we're looking at overall is just the overall alignment. Um, We're looking at how does the limb look? Does it look normal? Is it crooked? Did they have an old fracture when they were younger? Did they have a congenital problem? Looking for other things like a tumor Is there any masses or lesions in or around the bone? And then you want to look even at the soft tissue. You can't see soft tissue very well in x-ray. You know, MRIs and ultrasounds are better, but you can see some masses or changes in the soft tissue that we're looking at. And then you also want to take a look and see, is there anything in there like old screws, staples, plates, things from old surgery that we're looking at? So when we look at this, we're getting an overall assessment. And after you look at thousands of x-rays, sometimes I think patients, you know, they They almost seem upset. You know, you take a glance at the x-ray for two or three seconds and you kind of tell them what the diagnosis is. It's because we do this on a regular basis over and over and over again. And all of those little things that I told you are the first second sort of glimpse that when we look at the x-ray, we gather all that information really quickly, what it's supposed to look like. And anything that's abnormal draws our attention to it and say, let's look a little bit closer at this problem, which is not normal. Now, the most common thing though, And the thing I really want to focus on, though, is how does your doctor look at your x-ray and say you have arthritis and it's mild, moderate, or severe? Um, So the first thing that we're looking at is the space. So the space between your thigh bone and the space between your shin bone when you're standing up, either with the knee straight or with the knee slightly bent, that space is essentially three cartilages. So there's cartilage on the end of the thigh bone, which is about three millimeters. There's cartilage on top of the shin bone, which is about three millimeters. And then there's a meniscus cartilage in between. So again, in most patients, and you've heard me say this before, most patients over 50 already have had some meniscus tear in their life, just like they've had some rotator cuff tear in their life. So if that space is narrowed, one of the first things that tends to happen is you probably tore the meniscus 5, 10, 15 years ago, and that space is a little smaller. And then you started to wear on either the thigh bone cartilage or the shin bone cartilage or both, and that space is narrowed. So we do have different classifications that we can use I find that if someone doesn't know the classification or for a patient, it's kind of confusing. So what I'll typically describe it as this space on this side of the knee looks normal, or this side is greater than 50% of the space remaining that we typically see, or less than 50% of the space that we would typically see, or bone on bone. And that really paints a picture. So if somebody kind of understands, oh, I have normal space, or you know, I have less than 50% of the space remaining that lets them sort of have an understanding of what the arthritis is inside the knee. And this may not be in all of the, what we call compartments. So there's an inside compartment or on the insides of your knee. Those are the, what we call the medial side where your knees touch one another. There's the outside part, what we call the lateral side between the thigh bone and the shin bone. And there's also the, what we call patellofemoral joint, which is the kneecap portion. And that's where the back of the kneecap rubs up against the front of the thigh bone. So you can get arthritis in one or two or all three. So you may have normal cartilage space on one side and bone on bone on the other, or maybe you've lost 50% of cartilage on both sides. So it can mix and match depending on you and your anatomy and what prior injuries that you may have had. So joint space narrowing is the first thing that we see that helps us make the diagnosis of arthritis. Three other common things that we see looking at the x-ray that help us diagnose arthritis. So in addition to joint space narrowing, The second thing are what we call osteophytes or bone spurs. And bone spurs can be small, they can be big, they can be on the side, they can be in the back, they can be underneath the kneecap, they can be in lots of different places. And the bone spurs will form typically around the edges of the joint. If they're large and severe, they may limit motion. So over time, if somebody has a very limited amount of bending and straightening, sometimes that is due to the bone spurs. More often, people have bone spurs, and it's not the bone spurs that are limiting the motion, but they have arthritis and inflammation and pain, and all of those things have led to decreased motion over time, but you can have bone spurs in the knee. And just because I'm I'm sure someone's thinking about it, because we get asked all the time, well, if you do have arthritis, can't you just go in and remove the bone spurs? Well, yes and no. So technically, we could, 
But in an arthritic knee, it's not going to help you. And it's nothing that we ever do. It's different in certain joints. There's a few joints in certain areas where someone may have a very large bone spur that is inhibiting motion or causing pain. Um, We commonly see that more often in the big toe. So people get arthritis in the big toe joint. The toe can't come up, so you can't walk normally because the bone spurs on top bang into one another. They limit motion and cause severe pain, but the joint's not bad enough to have a major surgery of the joint. So you can go in and remove that bone, remove the bone spur, what's called a chylectomy. Um, And typically, over time, the arthritis gets worse and they need another operation down the road. But in the knee joint, it is extremely rare to ever have one or two bone spurs that are impeding motion where somebody will surgically go in and remove that. So it's just part of the arthritic process. But if you have a knee replacement, we remove all those bone spurs at that time. So you have joint space narrowing, number one. Number two, you have bone spurs or osteophytes. Number three, the third thing we see is what's called sclerosis. So what sclerosis is, is an increased area of whiteness. So if you're looking, let's say somebody has more arthritis on the inside or that medial aspect of the knee, what you may actually see is not only is the space narrowed, And along the bone edges, there's bone spurs. But the bone underneath where the cartilage would be is actually denser and whiter than the other half of the knee. And what happens is the body reacts to stress. So usually if your arthritis is on the inside, you start to get a little bit more bow-legged. You're putting more force in the bones. You've lost the cartilage. And that bone actually gets denser. It actually gets whiter on x-ray. And when you go in there and do surgery, typically the cartilage looks like a smooth, shiny, peeled, hard-boiled egg. In that part of the knee, it almost looks like an old marble floor if you were walking through a museum that you know millions of steps have walked across. It's this smooth, hard, polished surface, which makes sense as to why it hurts. And that underlying bone starts to get denser and thicker and compacts. And we call that whiteness on x-ray sclerosis. So now you have joint space narrowing, bone spurs, and sclerosis. The fourth common thing that we see with arthritis are what we call subchondral cysts. And what these are is on x-ray, you may see the bone starts to look along the edge of the joint. It looks like little honeycombs. There's little pockets and holes, and they may be small, they may be big, they may be clustered, there may be just one large one. And those are little pockets, typically a fluid. When you get in there, it actually is filled almost with a gelatinous-like material or kind of scar-type material. And the tissue will start to form in those areas and you'll see those little pockets on x-ray. So the four x-ray or radiographic signs of arthritis, narrowing of the joint space, bone spurs, sclerosis, and subchondral cystic changes. So all of those are things that we look at. Now, a couple other things that we're going to look for and watch for that occasionally um, on the lateral view or the knee view from the side, we're looking to see what does your kneecap position look like? Some people have a high kneecap called a patella alta, Some people have a low kneecap called a patella baja. And these things may be due to an old injury, an old surgery. They may be congenital, but they may also affect your knee function and the outcome of a knee replacement. And the other aspect that we look at on these x-rays is that kneecap view, what we call the merchant or the sunrise view. And again, what we're looking at, again, is the space narrowing, bone spurs, sclerosis, cysts, all the things of arthritis but also the position and tracking. So most people, the end of the thigh bone has a groove called the trochlea, and it's almost a V-shaped groove. And the kneecap has a similar V-shaped appearance that sits in that groove. If you're young, and more commonly a woman, um, and have had a number of what we call patellar dislocations or patellar instability, typically those women, when they were born, instead of a deep V-shaped groove, it's very flat. So you can imagine that instead of a V locking into one another, you have sort of this flat on flat. If the kneecap gets pushed off to the side, it can actually tilt off to the side and sublux or what we call dislocate. And that can be extremely painful. So more commonly, this is a teenage girl who has multiple episodes when she's young and playing sports. And now she's 50 and she has arthritis. And you can see those changes that have occurred over time where the kneecap is actually pushed off to the side. So we're looking to see, again, the amount of space, but the normal, what we call morphology or the shape of the kneecap and the shape of the thigh bone groove and whether or not that kneecap is tilted because occasionally it can just be centered but tilted um, and cause arthritis on the outside or it can actually be what we call subluxed where the kneecap is actually shifted you know, almost 25% over to the side and it's not sitting in its normal groove. And that can cause pain, especially with stair climbing getting off of the toilet, getting out of a chair, anything where you bend the knee, the kneecap arthritis tends to hurt a lot more in that area. Um, 
all of those things are things that are processed by most orthopedic surgeons, you know, quickly. I mean, we look at x-rays all the time, every day, you know, over and over again. So after years and years and years of seeing thousands and thousands of x-rays, you know, this is how we may look at the x-ray and go, oh, you have arthritis. But the reason I'm doing this, and, um, you know, from what I've heard is some patients didn't understand what that meant. You know, you, your doctor looked at the x-rays or maybe didn't even have the screen facing you. They were looking at the screen um, now that most of us don't have the old-fashioned plain x-rays anymore. And they looked at it and went, oh, you have arthritis. This is your plan or treatment. Um, where I tend to take the time to really spin the, sh- the screen so you can see it and point out all of these things in the office. But when the doctor says you have arthritis, this is what we mean. And that space narrowing, this is what, what we see and this is why we say that. And when you see the bone spurs or if you see the little cysts or if you see the extra whiteness on one side, just understand that those are all the four common x-ray findings of arthritis. Now, the thing I'm going to leave you with, though, is that does not mean that you're supposed to feel a certain way. So I may have somebody that has severe arthritis on x-ray. They may be bone on bone. They may have large bone spurs, but they're there because they have really mild symptoms. You know, maybe the doctor did the x-ray and you know, they don't have that many symptoms, but he was concerned because the report said severe arthritis and they sent them to the orthopedic surgeon. Um, So just understand that just because you have severe arthritis does not mean you need an operation. But if you have severe pain and swelling and limited activity, and you've tried pills and therapy and weight loss and shots, and you have severe x-ray findings of arthritis, then you may be a good candidate for knee replacement. You know, the harder part, though, is what if the x-rays look normal and your pain is severe? So that's where we start to look for other things. You know, the question is whether or not there's something going on in the knee with the ligaments or the bone, and that may require additional examinations and additional studies. Um, But the x-ray is the starting point, and especially for non-trauma, meaning you didn't fall, we're not concerned about a fracture or a break, The standing x-ray is key because if you lay down, that space is going to look bigger. And if you're knock-kneed or bow-legged and you lay down, we're not going to be able to tell that. So if you're sent for x-rays and it's not trauma and the tech wants you to lay down, you know, just question them and have them check with a doctor because most likely you should be standing and they may just have to verify that on the order before you leave to prevent you from then getting another x-ray in a week when you go to see the orthopedic surgeon. Um, So hopefully... You've taken a lot away from this. Hopefully, this answers a lot of the questions that you may have, um, or in anticipation of an upcoming visit, this may give you a lot of information and make you better to or help you understand what the doctor may show you or explain to you at that visit. So thanks again for listening. I'm Adam Rosen. You've been listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. Until next time, stay safe. Thanks for listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. If you've not already done so, please subscribe so you'll be notified of future episodes. And if you enjoy what you're hearing, please take the time to leave a review. It helps other people like you find the show. I'm your host, Adam Rosen, and until next time, stay safe.